Thanks for joining us for another session of the CCLI Road Trip. I'm Paul Herman, and now I get to talk to Mia Fields, one of our top CCLI songwriters. Mia, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. So tell me uh, first about the early days, if you could, with Hillsong and, and Darlene. Uh, best thing that ever happened to me. Mm. So I, um, I moved to Sydney when I was 17, um, and I, I kind of felt like, I was like, yes, I'm called to write songs. Um, but I had no skill set. I my first songs were rap songs, and they were mm. very like they were Steve McPherson, who was the publisher at Hillsong, will tell you my first songs were terrible. <laughs> um, so my story is kind of one of perseverance, like of believing that God had kind of said something to me, and feeling like I had this one one thing that I was trying to be a good steward over, and then I I sort of had to learn everything else. Um, I was always good at lyric, but I was not great at the music side of things. I wasn't great at melody. I wasn't great at phrasing. So. Um, it's really a story about perseverance and kind of just being in a place like Hillsong. Like it's such a great environment for like sharpening you because everybody's working at their craft. I think for anyone who like wants to get better at songwriting, just being in a community that yeah. challenges you is so great, and being around people that are better than you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you've had a number of co-writes, especially recently. Uh, talk to me about Chainbreaker, if you would, with Zach Williams. Uh, okay. Um, well, we. I actually got a phone call from Jonathan Smith um, saying he'd gone home for Christmas, he'd, he'd heard this guy lead worship, and he was like, man, I just, I think there's something about this guy, and I really believe in him, and I'd love to try and like, you know, get get him to meet some people in Nashville and mm -hmm. write some songs. So Jonathan um, rang and said, well, you know, no pressure, but like, would you want to write with this guy? He's not signed, he's like not doing an album, but would you want to write with this guy? And I'm like a big believer if like, if my friends believe in someone, mm -hmm. then like, I'm all about that. So yeah. I said, of course I will. He came to town and um, I walk into this writing session and there's this like six foot six guy. <laughs> yes. Like who is like, like as Arkansas as they come, yeah. like in like all the best ways. I don't even know what an Arkansas person is, but like he was like kind of country, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and anyway, so then he, um, we sit down and I say like, you know, like, tell me a bit about your story. Tell me a bit about like what's happened. And he kind of talked about like some of his like journey in like getting to where he was at, you know, in just some of the things he'd had to overcome and talked about, um, prison ministry. And so we start, Jonathan and I start saying like random things in the, in the session, like, you know, cause to, Finding out someone's story is a big part of like what's your authority and like what right. would be something great for you to sing into. Mm -hmm. And so I think like, oh, I don't know, one of us said like, if you've got pain, he's a pain taker. And then someone else said, if you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. And I, I mean, Jonathan and I were standing on the chairs being like, this is <laughs> awesome, this is awesome. And I think we, I think we kind of freaked Zach out a little uh -huh. bit. But the, the great thing about Zach is like that he was like, okay, okay, yeah, like, you know, even the things that like he probably, I don't know if he'd co-written that much before, mm -hmm. and I don't know if he'd been around Australians before, <laughs> um, but you know, he was like so on board and like, I could tell he was like, I'm not sure about this, mm -hmm. but okay, let's do it. Like, yeah. and so he kind of threw himself in and we just were like, let's just finish out the song. I love his process because he put so much of like his experience and some of the things that he'd overcome, mm -hmm. you know, it, into the song, which I think songs like that, that have a story behind them yeah. and that have like, especially someone's someone's own like struggle and then like the, like God stepping in and you when you tell that, like mm -hmm. they somehow they always have weight to it. So that's kind of how that song came about. And um, I mean, it definitely was a surprise that um, like the, the kind of like how it was received has been yes. a surprise and like, but I also kind of think isn't that just like God to just mm -hmm. like pluck you out of obscurity? Like, yeah. and I think that's something, you know, that's great for people to hear. Like you mm -hmm. don't actually need to like make yourself found. Like God will find you mm -hmm. and connect the dots, yeah. pluck you out of obscurity and then like set you up to win, you know? Yeah. And I love that about Zach. So it, it was a surprise, I guess, to the industry, mm -hmm. but I guess not a surprise if when you think about kingdom and the way kingdom works. Yeah. So. Because it really has resonated with our churches. Yeah. You know? So it's it's been an amazing journey just to I see I mean, that's the, the crazy part is that like churches are doing the song, yes. <laughs> which even like I, I had a friend here from Australia last week and she said that it's one of the songs that they put on their song list all the time. And I was like, I mean, Australia, like it, the song's kind of rootsy, like, yeah. and Australia doesn't always like resonate with that kind of music. So I love that it's kind of, you know, 
gone across the line and like oh, it really making has. it work. Yeah, that's great. Talk to me about another song that you co-wrote, uh, Tremble, uh, with, with Mosaic MSC. Um, yeah, just tell us about that one. That's awesome. Um, I actually love the Mosaic guys. They're amazing. Mariah is one of the most sweet spirits and still has like some fire in her, which mm -hmm. I love. Yes. Um, so I, the song actually, idea actually started um, probably a couple of weeks before. We were at a conference and um, her dad was preaching. And her dad was preaching on creativity and it was brilliant. Like he's just master at mm -hmm. like communication. Anyway, he, one of the things he said um, in the interview, oh, the, not the interview, the sermon, one of the things he said was that he struggles with night terrors mm. and I th and I was like man like you know there's I've had some friends you know um, who have actually like got like had night terrors and have seen God really step in and and like break that off and like yeah. you know they don't struggle with it anymore and I think whatever your story is whether it takes a year or whether it takes 10 years I think God's God's heart heart for us is always freedom and okay. and not to like be in fear you know mm -hmm. and so um, I was kind of like, oh gosh, like God can set you free from that, which I'm, you know, I know that He knows. Mm -hmm. But I knew I was riding with Mariah in a couple of weeks, so I thought, you know, sometimes I've found that you sing your way through a season. Yeah. So I thought, well, I won't. I'm not really going to go up to Irwin right now and be like, God wants to set you free. But I thought, but I can sing it over Him. So I, I, the day I was riding with Mariah, like a couple of weeks later, I got, I got to the session early and I said to Hank. Well, I heard Mariah's dad preach on like night terrors. Like, well, we didn't preach on it, but he mentioned that he had night terrors. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be great to write a song that, that like, even if he doesn't listen to anybody else's like worship music, he's going to listen to his daughter, you yes. know? So, <laughs> you know, so let's give give them something that she can sing over him in their church, mm -hmm. like that says, you know, that like Jesus is is the ultimate authority on all of it, like, yeah. and that like actually nothing is too great for him, like mm -hmm. that just his name, you know, we've all, I don't know if you, about you, but I've had those moments where I've woke up in the middle of the night full of fear. Yeah. And as soon as I say the name Jesus, it just lifts, you know? So I was like, I want a song that feels like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So we started this little chorus, just so simple, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness mm -hmm. tremble. Um, and Mariah came in and um, with some of the team and like, we ended up like, writing this song and she's like, yeah, this resonates with me. I don't think I actually ever told her that it's technically for her dad, like, <laughs> but you know, I think that's the beautiful part is that sometimes mm -hmm. like songs are for one person and yeah. then God does something with them anyway, mm -hmm. because they end up being for more than one person. Yeah. So. There's another song that has that same kind of depth, it feels like to me, and I'd love to hear the story about I'm Not Alone, you know, with, with Carrie Jo. Um, so I'm Not Alone. Um, is actually about Carrie and I having a cry that we were still single, uh. <laughs> which we are not anymore. Yeah. God can do a miracle, awesome. Mm -hmm. um, well, for me, for her, like she's like the ultimate like person to like want to marry. Um, but um, so Carrie, um, well, I, I, I'd actually flown in, I think, or was driving. I'd flown into um, Sacramento. Mm -hmm. She was in Reading, and we were trying to work out how to like meet each other on the way. But I had to be at something, and she had to be at something. So we were going opposite ways. So basically I'm on like going one way to Reading and she's like essentially driving past me and we're on the mm -hmm. phone talking about, <laughs> um, just like, to be honest, like how so there's, there's an element of like um, what we do or like, you know, like her with like, you know, ministry and like worship leading um, and me with just like traveling with writing and, and even just living, I live on the other side of the world for my family. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's an element of that that feels a bit lonely, you know, yeah. and we just started talking about like, man, like it's, it's, it is getting harder and harder to do this alone, you know. It'd be great to have, you know, someone on your team, whether that's mm -hmm. like, you know, having family around more or, you know. So we're just, we're talking about being lonely and, and there's something about moving in the opposite spirit. And so she starts saying on the phone, like, you know, we're not alone, like, we're not alone. And I, and I say, yeah, like, and I think we had, you know, we're girls, so I think we had to cry about it. Mm. Um, anyway, then I think like, a couple of weeks later, she went to Hillsong and um, was writing with Marty and they Skyped me in and we start writing and we end up writing this chorus, I'm not alone, it's such a simple chorus. Like, I'm not alone, I'm not alone, you will go before me, you will never leave me, which I think for Carrie, that's really like, one of her biggest authorities is to say that God is God is with you, God is for you, and so everything else is gonna like have to come into alignment with that. Mm -hmm. You know, so then we, we started writing that. We got kind of like half of it done, 
Then she came back and um, I think it's so beautiful that, she, you know, she said, would you guys be okay if I pulled my, my band into this song? And I thought, Is it, isn't that just like God? He goes, I'm gonna not just write like a song, like, you know, like get you guys to write a song, but like you actually have an opportunity he mm -hmm. here to make sure that you pull in like, even some like some guys who like probably were feeling the same thing or like, yeah. you know, <clears throat> I just love that she pulled her whole band into it. So mm -hmm. it's really a song about like moving in the opposite spirit. Yeah. <clears throat> I also want to ask Mia about a song from her current project, uh, from The Belonging. But to do that, I'm going to have to pull in her uh, co-writers as well. So we'll be back with you in just a, just a second. Okay, so we're back with Mia Fields and her co-writers, Hope Darst and Andrew Holt, uh, talking about the song Peace Be Still on the new Belonging project. So yeah, guys, just tell us about it. Mia, let's start with you. Uh, well, here's the great thing about songs and like, like writing with other people, is that you you're often writing your story into a song, but then, you know, you can't help but write some other people's story in, into a song. So for all three of us, um, the song got outworked in kind of um, a unique way, where you know, these guys kind of had to walk, like you know walk out some of the elements of the song. Um, but really, it started off poor Andrew like. He gets stuck in a room with two girls and like, and I, um, so what had happened was I'd gone to Israel the year before and um, had gone to Galilee, it was the one place I really wanted to go because I was like, man, like those waves will still remember, like mm -hmm. they still remember what Jesus' feet feels like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was a place not just where like, where the impossible was defied, but it was a place where when there wasn't enough, Jesus said, throw your nets on the other side, you know, yeah. and like they pulled out more than enough. Awesome. So I was like, there's something special about this place. and. I remember going there with um, some friends and um, picking up a rock from the side of the um, ocean, which is really a lake. Mm -hmm. um, but also, like picking up a rock and just saying, like, you know, I'm going to leave a prayer here, and um, writing, you know, for me, like something that, like, I'd seen God move in every area of my life, but there was one area that I hadn't. So I was like, man, I really, I really believe that God's going to move. So I wrote a prayer about it on the rock, and I prayed over it and I left it mm -hmm. in Galilee. You know, we, and I thought, you know, I'm going to write a song about this. And then fast forward a few months later and the very thing that I'd written down, like God did. Mm -hmm. um, and and then all of a sudden one morning it looked like everything was going to fall apart. And that's a, like a hard moment, I think, where you, where God says, like, you know, but what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And so for me, like the, the the root of like, like the whole thing was disappointment, you know, like, and, yeah. and so I came into like, like being scared of being disappointed, you know, because I thought it was something that I'd overcome. So I came into this right. And I basically sat down and was like, I'm going to need to write, write about peace today because I don't feel any peace. And so I really need to sing that over my situation. Um, and, you know, so we sat down. I think there is something to that. I think sometimes yeah. we think, you know, worship is like, let's let's sing like what's true. And I go, yes, it is. But like you sing it before, before it feels true. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. there is something about worship that has the power you know, and like to actually be warfare and sing like yeah. what isn't into like into being, you know. So mm -hmm. for me, like, you know, I sit down with these guys and I start crying and then Hope's like, well, actually we're in like kind of a hard season too. <laughs> like feels like season we're in. Mm -hmm. She starts crying. I think Andrew was kind of like, what the heck? Like, um, you know, but, you know, when we're talking about, you know, like I don't want to be afraid, like every time I see the waves, you know, for me, I'm talking about like, you know, I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to like keep reverting to like, mm -hmm fear about disappointment you know because yeah. I know like in my heart I know that God is a God who doesn't disappoint and so it was kind of singing like something in, instead I'm like well at the end of the day like I, these waves are only waves disappointment's just mm -hmm. disappointment and the disappointment isn't greater than God's ability to yeah. come through you know mm -hmm. so the song is really you know it started about like you know just kind of talking about a situation that felt like it was going to completely fall through a promise that was written down at Galilee yeah um, and that we had to sing the opposite over like mm -hmm. how it seemed. And yeah. you know what, and it all worked out, so. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And so Hope, what did you bring into the session? Um, I think I really, when Mia sat down and she said, I'm really, really needing to write a song about peace. I was in a season where I, peace felt very elusive to me. I was mm -hmm. really fighting for peace mm -hmm. and just some personal areas of my life. So when she said, I want to write a song about peace, I was like, yes, let's write it. But if I'm being completely honest, I, I did, I didn't have the peace yet. So mm -hmm. I was having to write that song kind of like where Mia was like, I'm, I'm professing this over my life. I'm, I'm putting this 
as my kind of, I'm gonna have to sing this until I have peace. And it took a while, like that season wasn't like, we wrote the song and then the next day I was like, oh, I have all this peace. Like, I actually had to sing that song specifically <coughs> over my life mm. for months and mm. months awesome. and months while God began to do a deep healing yeah. work in my heart. And on a personal level, like that song specifically, God ended up using over a period of time to really highlight some things that he was like, you don't have peace in this area. Yeah. And I want I want to bring peace, I want to bring healing. And so I think, you know, sometimes as songwriters, we write songs and we write them and we, we just set them out there and we just, you know, we can, you can almost a little bit detach from them because you've mm -hmm. written for someone else or you've yeah. written them for something. But this song became a song that like I even carried in my heart, mm -hmm. like even in our church as we mm -hmm. all would lead it week yeah. after week after week. And we just have to sing it over and over and over. And mm -hmm. I remember God one day specifically, I was just praying and, and was still like, God, I just need peace in this area. And I felt like he's like, I've already given you peace. Mm -hmm you declare it over yourself every time you sing this song. Yeah. He's like, so it's already there. You just have to continue to activate mm -hmm. this thing over so and over and over. And eventually like that thing lifted and like mm -hmm. I got peace and just real healing in my heart. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes songs have such a powerful life, even for the people, you know, that are carrying it for as songwriters. Mm -hmm. And then it, it just starts to kind of like the song, it's like waves. Like, yeah. and I think each of us have this Thing with this song where it's given us some authority when we sing it mm -hmm. to be like we've had to fight for peace so like mm -hmm. when we sing this over so you like good. we're yeah. singing this from a place of like these aren't just words to us this is life lived this mm -hmm. is a road that we've actually had to walk out so yeah and andrew what's your experience and your perspective yeah so they say that I was weird in the right because they were crying, but I don't feel like I was. But you were, you were, <laughs> you were weird at like all. The, the but I, person to like have true crying. You yeah. just handled all of our weirdness I, really well. I remember <laughs> writing the song, and we actually went and got coffee after, and just knowing that the song was special. And but in the in the moment, my life was really awesome. I think, and mm -hmm. I think I wasn't singing peace for myself, but I knew I was singing. What like, Mia was saying, prophesying over yourself in the future. Yeah. And so we wrote this song and. Um, like June or July of 2016 mm -hmm. for like a writing retreat for our church. And we start singing in church and it's just flying, like Hope did a demo and it's beautiful. And the next year, 2017, in February, like me and my wife found out we're pregnant. And so like it's the most amazing moment mm -hmm. in our lives. It's like, oh, we're pregnant, this is beautiful. And then March 29th is actually my wife's birthday. We find out that we're probably gonna lose the baby. and. And I remember we get back in the car after we get in that doctor's appointment and all we could do is sing this song, Be, be Still, over our hearts, let faith rise up. Mm -hmm. And then a week later we find out like we did lose the baby and this song, then in that moment, like I realized months before I was prophesying over my own life, mm -hmm. in a, yeah. like months before, and mm -hmm. it was all we could do was sing this song, let faith rise up, peace be still over our hearts. And I think that's the beautiful thing about songs, and especially mm -hmm. worship music, is because we write a song, it comes from a place of authority. Yeah. When Mia walks in, is like, I've got to sing this song. And then all of a sudden, millions of people in their own lives, in their own story, mm -hmm. can grab a hold of it and say, okay, this speaks to me now, yeah. in the moment I'm in right now. And, um, and we've seen that in our own church, like so many people, I can't tell you when we released this record, like, the amount of testimonies coming in of like, peace mm -hmm. be still, that song, it carried me through this. And then of all times, we released a song, it's like Harvey, Irma, all these hurricanes are going on. And I'm like, just like God, to yeah. like, we're gonna release a song called Peace Be Still in the middle of the worst storms our country may have ever mm -hmm. seen. And it's just, I love worship because of that and the yeah. song because yeah. of that. But, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you all for sharing. Yeah. This was this was great. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. And thank you for watching. Take care.